Nemesis, you should have been my favorite work. The third backtracking was just a scam. The two-year foreshadowing has finally come to an end. The new version of the plot may not have much content, but the information contained is extremely explosive. Remember the beginning of opening the server. The sage leads the heirs of Ida to fight in Volan, attacking High Crows with Time Space Engine. It was once thought that the cataclysm would reappear, but this operation is shrouded in mist. The process is even more complicated and confusing. There are three suspicious points. One is that the large army is pressing the border and there are also tigers luring away from the mountains in front of them. Why did the sage retreat without reason when he had the advantage? Second, the sage planned to stay dormant for 10 years. Only three people broke it? Third, Hycros's reinforcements did not arrive. The heirs of Ida, however, retreated before he was defeated. Why did Angle of Clemency do this? These three doubts are easily resolved. Nothing more than concealing one's ears and eyes. In fact, it is a blatant construction of a plank road and a covert passage of time. Even the sins of heaven can still be done. One cannot live without committing one's own wrongdoing. Carl, former executive officer of the 9th district, saved the disaster of Aberate. Overcoming public opinion and launching a retrospective plan. But being destroyed by others leads to disasters. The turbulent flow of time and space is raging, and thousands of palaces and palaces are collapsing. Since then, the planet Ida regime of the Norn Federation has collapsed. Its scientific research institution Hycros replaced it. Hycros harbors evil intentions. He has coveted Omnium energy for a long time. Although disasters have already occurred. But with the heart of Omnium energy. After years of hard research, he finally found a suppressor to balance radiation. But it also serves as a means of governing the people. After that, the people of heaven dwell in a worry-free land. The people on the ground suffer greatly from radiation. Struggling to survive in the end of the world. In this world, there are extraordinary people born. It's called the Sage. Dealing with Aberi by means of mechanical transformation. Gather the righteous under the pretext that Omnium Energy is the original sin. Create an organization in the name of the heirs of Ida to compete with Hycros. Since then, there have been constant disputes between the two sides. But in reality, they are all seeking the well-being of surviving humanity. However, both sides have different ideologies and positions. Hycros brings together top scientific research forces. Advocate for in-depth research. So as to fully master Omnium Energy. The heirs of Ida sleeps in the snow. Garrison Warren. Collaborating with armed groups from various regions to constrain Hycros. Its proposition is that tracing back can wash away all evil. The crimes committed at present. The resulting cause and effect are all illusions. Not breaking, not standing, breaking and then standing. Since then, the two heroes have been constantly fighting and attacking each other. Decades without a winner. Until today. The battle between the heirs of Aida's son and Hycros seems very good. But if described in one sentence. That's how to build a plank road openly and sneak through the dark. The story of Asperia in Tower of Fantasy cannot be separated from these two sentences. At the beginning, the sage caught the executor. Use this as bait to expand the layout. Later, they joined forces with the Ravagers to attack the shelter. Seemingly for the purpose of obtaining supplies. In fact, it is to prepare for Shirley's body. When we were in the Asperia refuge, we ran into Franz. He came to investigate the reason why heirs of Ida appeared in ancient ruins. The heirs of Ida was already repairing the space-time well. Prepare for the third time retracement. When Zeke leaves with Shirley, we met the son of the heirs of Ida attacking the industrial area in Banjas. But the real reason is to make Zeke meets Kalidor and son. Understand the consequences of non-cooperation. So as to allow Shirley to accept the transformation. At the beginning, the heirs of Ida starts the Omnium Energy Tower. Reverse energy to Tower of Fantasy. Seems to be trying to burst the main tower's savings pool. In reality, it is to build the Tower of Fantasy into an unparalleled large energy battery. Provide energy for the third retrospective. After closing the Omnium Energy Tower, the heirs of Ida attacks all over the country. In fact, it is also to cover up the actions of the machines that seize time and space. Until the final attack on Hycros. Start the third time retracement. Also to conceal its true purpose. That's to obtain the data. In the new plot. Plotty mentioned. After the heirs of Ida captured Hycros. Hycros District 9 is paralyzed. She rewrote the program at Evan's plea. If the purpose of the heirs of Ida is only to go back a third time. There's no need to do this. Plotty also mentioned that District 9 lost a batch of confidential information. This batch of confidential information is the real purpose of the heirs of Aida's son. To know the content of this batch of confidential information. We have to figure out what happens after the heirs of Ida. After attacking High Crows. Shirley is guaranteed by Dr. Claire. Living on Cetus Island. At that time, she received a message from the Angle of Clemency alone. After many twists and turns, she finally found the owner of the communication, Freja. She came with the news of the sage. Also told us about Vera. The heirs of Ida is also leading us to Vera. But when we actually went to Vera. The heirs of Ida has never moved. What is the reason for them to guide us to go? And then there was no action? It's Tower Fantasy. The heirs of Ida knows that there is also a magic tower in Vera. But after we arrived at Vera. No movement on the Tower of Fantasy. So the heirs of Ida didn't move. Until visitors from Domain 9. The Angle of Clemency reappears. Shirley was saved in the submarine battle. That's not right. At this time, there is no Tower of Fantasy in Domain 9. Why did the heirs of Ida act? Because Lon used the power of timestamp. The timestamp system originates from ancient civilizations. Same origin as the ancient ruins of Asperia. 
This also makes the sage rekindle hope. In fact, I doubt that the son of the heirs of Ida is right about Vera and Domain 9. There has always been surveillance. The rescue of Angle of Clemency is too coincidental. Domain 9 transformed the infinite sundial into a magic tower. Nemesis is suddenly in trouble. It's also a coincidence here. If all this is directed by the sage, then the purpose of the heirs of Ida is to control the tower of fantasy. Let's review the entire plot process. The abnormal movement of Omnium Energy Tower gathers Omnium Energy on the top of the tower. The heirs of Ida beat Hycros to steal data. Then the sage transmitted the data into Nemesis in the battle. Then lead them to Vera through Frika. Find another tower of fantasy. But they encounter Grayspace Entity. Since then, we have deviated from the plan. Wait until the Domain 9 Celestial Gate reopens. Lon and Canro cross the border. Discover the existence of timestamp technology. The sage once again. Send Angle of Clemency to protect Nemesis. And lead Shirley to Domain 9 subconsciously. Until Infinite Sundial was transformed into a magic tower. Restart of Omnium Reactor. Nemesis was activated. And authorized the new Phantom Tower to set restrictions. This is a relatively reasonable process. Whether it's Jesto's or Tempo's supercomputer. They are all deified supercomputers. That authorization is likely not its own power. But because of the key owned by the permission. Key data is the key to authorization. This speculation also comes from Plotty's identity. She referred to herself as the rotating authorizer. Responsible for the management of Jesto's network system. Monitor the operation of all Omnium reactor. From the description, it this is more like a position. Rather than a special physique. So the sage can steal data. It is possible to control Tower of Fantasy through Nemesis. But don't worry either. Currently, it appears that, although Nemesis cheated on the Tower of Fantasy, but it only limits the output power of the Tower of Fantasy. Once the limit is exceeded, it will trip. And the reason may not be limited to this. Domain 9 has been checked. No issues found. Plotty instead returned to headquarters to investigate. It's hard to say that the heirs of Ida has infiltrated the headquarters. Whether it is the earliest virus ascending infection, or paralyze the Hycros program. Make the infiltration of the heirs of Ida easier. Maybe you can watch the spy war in the magic tower. Okay, let's start from scratch and analyze the plot of this episode. Just logged in and received Rebe's communication. Invite us to go to Infinite Sundial for a chat. This is Yanua's debut. Interesting is Brevi's introduction. The character who lays the groundwork in the dialogue. This introduction method is very interesting. I bet 99% of people wouldn't introduce their friends like this. This statement is more like being deliberately made to conform to one's character. This is what Xiaofeng often said that Brevi is not stupid and sweet. Her performance is more natural than natural. It's better to say that she has always been to maintain her character. She was immersed in the atmosphere of playing the role of a magical girl. But this is controlled by reason. That's why Yanua was introduced in a bookish foreshadowing form. Yanua is a good friend of Brevi. Not only providing advice for her, protecting personal safety, also providing services to take care of daily living. Is this the power of the bond between two people? The conversation between the two was also quite imaginative. Considering various survival strategies in various situations. Definitely a seed player participating in wilderness survival. Under Brevi's introduction, we learned that there was a problem with the transformed Tower of Fantasy. In addition to Yanua, others were sent to Domain 9 to investigate. So we immediately set out to Celestial Gate. The newcomer is Plotty who was born in the headquarters of Hycros. Heterochromatic pupils, slightly high and cold. But what I'm more curious about is her age. She is a rotating authorizer. Responsible for managing the Jesto's network. Monitor the operation of the primary energy reactor. How long did she manage it? There are two situations here. One is that Plotty is like Evans. Before the Cataclysm. Affected by Cataclysm, no longer aging. This can also explain why she has an identity with permission level 5. Because of sufficient seniority. Under this speculation. Plotty and Evans are old acquaintances. This can also explain why Evans would plead with her to write the program. The other is that Plotty is not very old. She is a genius girl. Through outstanding research achievements. Promoted to rotating authorizer by breaking the rules. Managing the Jesto's network. At present, both of these speculations are possible. Which one do you prefer? Plotty's self-introduction was not long. But there is a lot of information. She's from Hycro's headquarters, not District 9. Finally, the second Hycro's of Asperia came to the surface. It's not a specific district, but the headquarters. This point was foreshadowed earlier. Let's return to the scene of Gesthos's debut. Permission level 5, 9th zone, Lord Evans, long time no see. Gesthos calls Evans the executive officer of District 9. It can also be seen that Gesthos is in the headquarters. So where's the headquarters? There are still two transmissions that have not been started in the current Hycro's District 9. One is the portal of the conference area. Access level 4 of District 9 is required at least. Another one is the guarded doorframe. If the map of Hycro's headquarters appears later. This portal is likely the entrance. Plotty is an elite efficiency person. Very dissatisfied with everyone's late arrival. It also shows her attitude towards District 9. Simply put, it's just waste. Think about it. District 9 is really a waste. From the beginning of the plot, they were led by the heirs of Ida. In the end, their homes were also stolen. This is also an extremely embarrassing matter within the organization. But it's also difficult to sort out the theft of the house. What if Evans intentionally let them in? After all, Evans also said. He doesn't want not to backtrack. But waiting for time and space to calm down. But if someone bears the consequences. Now backtracking is not impossible. The son of the heirs of Ida became the biggest backer. Asperia's decisive battle is really a farce. Seems like the sky and earth are dimly lit. 
only one part of the sage was killed. And Zeke is missing. Neither side suffered significant losses. This is very magical. Plotty mentioned a name, Algorithm Arc. This may be where Jesto's is. Through Plotty's description, it can be seen that Algorithm Arc is only a location of the headquarters. We can look forward to the size of Hypros's headquarters. Don't be like Chingong. It has only two rooms. After receiving Plotty, we went back to Infinite Sundial again. Yun, the head of Infinite Sundial, is also here. A few days no see. Even the NPC has become more beautiful. Everyone discussed the current issue. Infinite Sundial was banned. Unable to transmit raw energy on a large scale. This makes the third generation timestamp system unable to start. Now we can understand why the giant divine weapons movements are so foolish. Turns out there's not enough energy. Then Gong officially opened to the public. On the third floor of the Infinite Sundial. Hiding in the depths of the mountain. Xiaofeng had guessed its location before. But I didn't expect it to merge with the Infinite Sundials. You know, Gong is the highest administrative organ of Domain 9. I saw that when we came to the third floor, we also met the mysterious person in Heartway. That is, supercomputer tempos. The scene here is similar to that of Domain 9 Vision. But the surrounding cabinets have been replaced with a massive number of servers. This means we have to mention the water cooling system under our feet. The floors are all made of glass. Under the glass, there are still water waves circulating. The water cooling system is very reasonable. After all, servers also require heat dissipation. Darkform's interpretation has made new progress. Pendeka County ruins are indeed alien laboratories. And Jade Egg's room is the incubation chamber. From it, we also found the record of our transformation with Nanine. It can also be seen from here that the incubator is not a disposable item. As long as there is energy, it can continuously hatch larvae. Nanine is now seizing the Christomax of advanced darkness. Evolved into adults based on this. Nanine sacrificed the entire exploration team and heritage inventory. Only that they transformed into us. We can imagine how many creatures the real hive mother has to sacrifice. The purpose of Nanine is clear. It's just a strategy of fighting you. Become a new hive mother. Then take down the old hive mother and replace it. As she said, darkness is like me, heaven and earth live forever. Before this, all the lines of PV have been fulfilled one by one. Undoubtedly the first PV of the Tower of Fantasy. It has a very high goal content. But what should we do after Nanine is replaced? At that time, she was likely to have lost her sanity. Please make a reservation for the final boss first. The purpose of everyone's trip is to let MS, why you open Tempo's supercomputer's authority. MS, why you readily agreed. Next, it's time to go to the control center on the second floor. Domain 9 Tower of Fantasy was initially built, but there were many problems. What is the heirs of Aida's trans-temporal intervention? Is it really kind of Hycros to help Domain 9? We will continue to interpret in the next issue. That's all for this issue. Follow Xiaofeng. Take you to experience a different fantasy tower.